I just recorded this whole video and it turned out my mixer died halfway through. I've sort of duct tape fixed it for now, but I'm gonna have to buy another one. Hopefully I can stop having these problems in the future and have these recordings be a little less frustrating. <laughs> Anyway, hey dudes and dudettes, have you ever hit GT Goku Assist and just thought, man, I don't like fighting this character at all. I wish there was a way to just kill him right now, you know? Just get this character off the screen. Well, with happy birthday combos, you totally can. And you can build a ton of meter while doing it and do a lot of damage to their point character as well. Anyway, that's the pitch. That's what this video is about. If you want to learn how to do a happy birthday combo or learn why your combos always drop on the assist characters, why do they always fall out? Why don't they stay together? How do I kill these characters consistently when I get the happy birthday? What is a happy birthday? This is the video for you. So let's start with what a happy birthday is. This term's been around forever, for way longer than Dragon Ball has been around. If you've ever played or watched our Marvel vs. Capcom game, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. A happy birthday is when you hit their point character and their assist at the same time. And because an assist typically takes more damage than the point character, for one reason or another depending on the game, you can typically kill their assist if you optimize a combo to do so. In some games, it's just as simple as dumping supers one after another when you recognize that you've got their assist in the combo. In Dragon Ball, it's a little more complicated than that, but it's a lot more simple than a lot of people think. Well, why are happy birthday combos important? Well, as you can guess, anytime you can kill a character as a guaranteed punish, it's pretty much always worth it. Another really nice thing is that because you probably spark during this combo and because you're hitting two characters at once, you're going to build a ton of meter. And if you use your spark, their point character is going to take a lot of non-recoverable health. Look at how little of that is actually recoverable blue health. So effectively you can get rid of one character who hasn't even had a chance to play the game yet because they just came in as an assist and almost kill their point character and probably get some sort of good situation assuming that you can end in a level 3 or some kind of good knockdown as well. But in general, you're probably just going to dump a bunch of level 1 supers at the end of your combo, take the victory of killing whatever character was the assist that you really didn't want to have around, whether that's GT, Goku, you know, whatever Gohan. If you don't like Frieza, you don't like Hit, whoever, you know, up to you. But that character could be gone. So uh, it's pretty simple, straightforward. Happy birthdays do a lot of damage and they can really turn the tide of a battle really quickly. But there are some problems with happy birthday combos. A lot of people get the hit and they just do their standard bread and butter combo, something like this that works for most characters. And they'll notice like, oh, why did they drop out? Why did the assist drop out? Why isn't GT Goku still in the combo anymore? Was he just too small? Why does this character drop out and that one doesn't? Typically, if you go for your basic standard bread and butter combo that works on pretty much everyone, you're gonna run into a problem. They typically look like this. You do some kind of launcher, super dash, something, and do another jump 2H, double jump, LLL, and that's the combo. Some variation of that works for most characters in the game, but that combo doesn't work on assist characters. So if you ever notice that you get their assist in the combo and you do this standard bread and butter, they are likely to drop out. So before we talk about how to make sure your happy birthday combos work consistently, let's talk about why they don't work, because that's going to come into play for everything else we talk about later. Generally, it's going to come down to following just a few rules to make sure that you don't screw up your combo or do something that might cause the assist character to drop out. In DBFZ, if you hit an assist, the more hits you do, the farther the two characters get spread out. Let's do a short combo just to show this point. You can see at the beginning they're really close together, but as more hits happen, by the end of the combo they spread out farther and farther and farther. Generally, the assist character kind of gets pulled towards you, and their point character gets pulled away from you, and gradually they'll get too far apart, and they'll drop out. Also, if you use a smash, they get put back together, but if you use another launcher, they get spread really far apart. So just look at the end of this combo how far apart the two of them end up. We're just gonna stop at the launcher and just see that they're really far apart there. And if we were to do a forward jump, forward jumping is generally bad because we'll end up passing between the two characters there. And obviously most characters have a hard time hitting behind them and in front of them at the same time. So that's what causes these characters to drop out. Also really quick, why do assists take so much extra damage in these combos? It basically boils down to they take full damage from every hit no matter what, while their point character is taking scaled damage from every hit. As a combo goes on, every hit does less and less damage. This is called combo scaling. 
And it's why at the end of a combo, that move, that uh, that punch overhead only did 100 damage, but raw, it does 1,000 damage or 1,200 damage. Same thing happens with supers. A super on its own will do roughly 2,000 damage. But if I were to do this super at the end of a combo, it'll only do around 750 or 800 damage. But when it comes to an assist that's on the screen and not a point character that's on the screen, the assist is gonna take full damage from every hit. So the longer that a combo goes on, the more damage an assist is gonna take. And if you can find a way to dump supers at the end of that combo, they're gonna take the full 2000 damage from this super instead of the 800 damage that the point character is taking. And you can imagine if you can build the meter to dump three supers in a row, then you could really just obliterate them at the end of a combo. Let's talk about how to keep them in the combo so we can consistently KO their character. Generally, it's just gonna come down to following a few rules to make sure you don't do something that could accidentally have them drop out. The first rule is that whenever you double jump in a combo, instead of forward jumping like that, we're gonna want a neutral jump instead. Like that. Remember, as the assist character is getting spread apart from their main character, we don't ever wanna pass the assist character. So if we neutral jump, we have a greater chance at making sure that doesn't happen. And this goes for after the launcher too. We're gonna want a neutral jump at this point instead of forward jump. The next thing to keep in mind is that launchers keep the characters together. You can see they're at the exact same spot in this combo after we do our launcher. So most characters are gonna combo into either a crouching heavy on the ground, if they're a character like Hit or Frieza who doesn't have a jump 2H, or if you have a jump 2H, a jump crouching heavy, you're gonna use that instead. Just keep in mind that launchers are gonna sandwich them back together so you know exactly where they're gonna be and that's gonna keep it consistent. But you don't wanna use your jump 2H after you've already launched the character once because jump 2Hs tend to spread the characters out a lot. And you can kind of see here how far apart they end up at the end of that combo. So at the end of this combo, the general BNB would be to do something something jump 2H, something something something, Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to omit the jump to H altogether. I'll do MLL, neutral jump, LLL, and that'll be fine. Let's take a look at a combo we can put together with what we've learned so far, not even using Spark. That did a ton of damage to their assist character, and if we had a level 3 available, maybe we would have killed. But I know we can do better. This is a perfect time where if you notice that you got the happy birthday, you're going to want to spark and find a way to kill them both. And like we said earlier, because you're going to build more meter with the spark and you're going to build more meter for hitting two characters at the same time, you're going to have so much more meter to dump supers at the end of the combo. And you can see here that even if we start with zero meter, we should build enough meter in this combo to be able to kill their point character somehow. And I assume here just two supers would do the trick. And that's the case. The next thing that you're gonna wanna take advantage of when you're doing a happy birthday combo, especially with sparking, is using a special attack that launches the opponent horizontally in the air. So with Super Saiyan Goku, it would be his Tatsu. With Zamasu, he could use his Slash. And if you're in sparking, you're gonna be able to hold Vanish and continue the combo this way. And when you're in sparking, you can see that when we do this, it helps keep the characters together. So let's see what this looks like. Something like that. But why does this work? Well, it makes sense when you really think about it. Our character acts as a wall that neither of those two characters can pass. So first their point character gets pressed up against us, then their assist character gets pressed up against us, and then when we continue our combo, we know exactly where the two of them are. They're back together again. Getting your happy birthday combos to work consistently is pretty much just about knowing what tools you have available to make sure that your opponents are sandwiched together. Just like how we know that whenever we use a launcher, they're gonna get sucked perfectly back together again. So again, in Goku's case, he's gonna use Tatsu, but most characters have something that works like this. Goku could use Tatsu, Zamasu could use his forward slash, Ginyu could use shoulder tackle, Bardock could use Lariat, uh, either Vegeta could use rocket kick, and the list goes on and on and on. So let's just do a really quick example of Zamasu. 
We got them together. We got our launcher. Neutral jump. And we're good to go. And I would bet this is probably enough to KO GT Goku, and it is. But what if our character doesn't have a move that works this way? What if we don't have any air specials at all, like hit? If our character really doesn't have any moves that work this way, we can probably still use Jump 2H. This is one of the times where I would recommend using it, but we're going to hold the Vanish afterwards to get him back together. This is what I do with Android 18. It looks like it works with Hit. You're going to want to double check if it works for your characters too. So even if we're playing Hit or Android 18 or some character that doesn't have a horizontally launching special move in the air, we should still have some kind of option to make sure we get them back together so we can start dumping supers. And we're good to go. Let's do this one more time to recap everything we've learned so far. We'll spark once we see that they're together. We know our launcher keeps them together. We'll neutral jump. Something into hold vanish to put them back together. LLL and super and we're good to go. Goodbye GT Goku. There are a few things we need to keep in mind though. Keep in mind that cinematic moves typically won't work. So Frieza's death ball can only hit one character at a time. You can see that GT Goku drops out of this before the ball explodes. The same thing goes for cinematic super. So you can see GT Goku drops out of this and isn't going to take any damage from Frieza's super. You can kind of get around this with some cinematic supers because they'll still usually do the damage if you DHC before the cinematic happens. And since the cinematic is a thing that was giving us trouble in the first place, if the cinematic doesn't happen, then we can start stacking supers and we're still good to go. Don't worry, the damage from hit super still does actually happen. If you have a character that has a cinematic level 1, double check that you can do this kind of thing with it. Otherwise, you're going to have to DHC in different ways. So, in Hit's case, maybe I just end my combo by going straight into Goku's level 1 beam instead, which I know is going to work. By the way, if you don't know how to cancel into a super without doing your own super first, because a lot of people think you have to do super and a super, you don't have to do that. After you get your sliding knockdown, just input a half circle forward and the assist of the character you want to swap to, and that'll get you level 1. Half circle forward back gives you level 3 instead. In Android 18's case, even though her level 3 is a cinematic, it does actually do happy birthdays properly. But this isn't the case for most level 3s, so you're going to want to double check for yourself what works and what doesn't. Another thing to keep in mind that if your character doesn't have a move in the air that launches, you're going to need to launch them on the ground. So characters like Frieza are going to have to combo into Crouching Heavy on the ground, his 2H. Because once you're in the air, there really isn't a great way to launch anymore. But if you do get a hit and see that they're sandwiched on the ground, you can always spark in the air and then launch after the spark, and that'll work fine. This is probably one of the biggest things that makes it difficult for some characters to get good happy birthday combos compared to others. And I think Frieza is a really good example of a character where you have to really learn a happy birthday combo instead of doing the thing that probably works with everyone else. So as always, it's worth labbing what works with your characters before you do it in an actual match. By the way, I've been showing a lot of these examples with GT Goku Assist because I know a lot of people would love to be able to KO that character anyway, but also he's really small. So you can kind of be assured that if it works on him, it'll probably work on most characters or pretty much any character. Okay, another thing to keep in mind, along with this topic of not everyone having a launcher in the air, horizontal launchers don't work. So characters that don't have a vertical launching jump to H will drop the character out. So Cell, since he launches horizontally instead, is going to have a problem here. You can see GT Goku dropped out. Another example is going to be Android 16. He runs into the same kind of problem. And of course, characters like Zamasu. If you get creative and lab a bit, you can usually find a way to work around these problems. Something like that. But in general, the most consistent thing you can do is probably still just going to be the spark once you see that you got the hit, and then go for a launcher of some kind, and then just dump your supers like normal. And remember, anything that only hits one character, like a cinematic or a command grab, isn't going to work in these kind of combos. So even as a character like Android 16 who might have trouble getting the opponents back down to the ground, you might still just be able to go for an air super instead, and if any of your other supers can track high enough, you can kill them that way. Obviously, some characters are better at happy birthdays than others, 
but I think the characters that are bad at it are a lot more rare than the characters that are good at it. One last thing that I want you to keep in mind before you spark in a happy birthday combo is to make sure that the two characters are together the way that you think before you spark. Right there, it looked like I hit GT Goku, but I actually didn't. So just be careful with that. Give yourself some time to double check that, okay, both characters are exactly where I know they should be before we spark. Sometimes it looks like you hit them both and you totally did and you're good to go. And other times you'll see that they dropped out right away and you'll want to not spark there. So just give yourself maybe like four or five hits in a combo. Remember to neutral jump whenever possible to make sure that they don't fall out before you do your spark. Pretty much everything we've talked about so far has been sparking combos for mid-screen, but what if we're in the corner? If we're in the corner, there's a lot less to worry about because there's a lot less chance of them dropping out, which means we can pretty much do our bread and butter combos in the corner with a lot of characters. I still would try to avoid moves that launch horizontally, and you still have to avoid cinematic moves, but generally, if we get the hit in the corner, we can be pretty sure that our assists are gonna work, and we can extend combos a lot better and probably not have to spend spark at all. And you don't even have to do a super good combo, but if you use your assists at all, you're probably going to build a lot of meter, and you're probably going to be able to kill without having to use spark. If you've ever watched Fenrich play and seen him get a happy birthday combo with his back to the corner, you've probably seen him spark and run under the opponent before continuing the combo. And it's basically for what we just talked about. As long as you can get your opponents back to the corner, it's really easy to extend with assists, get some extra damage, and you can probably KO with just a single bar, just like that. Depending on what you're more comfortable with, you could either continue to just do the mid-screen combo like we talked about, or you can side swap and put them in the corner. One extra benefit to this is that you won't need to spend your Vanish, so you'll have more meter at the end of it, and since they're in the corner when the combo's over, if you didn't manage to KO their point character, you're in a much better position to continue offense. Anyway, I think that just about covers happy birthday combos. I don't want this channel to be all about combos and optimizing characters, but this is a topic that applies to every character in the game. It applies to everyone. Everyone's gotten a happy birthday combo at some point. So I really want you guys to be able to take advantage of that and really get rewarded for it the next time it shows up for you. If you want to continue learning Dragon Ball Fighters with me and other fighting games, feel free to subscribe to the channel or follow me on Twitch to see when I go live. I've been trying to stream a lot more over there ever since Season 3 started. I hope I can see some of you guys when I'm live. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.